Hey, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another PS4 and PS5 jailbreak news update. So once again, got a good few topics to cover here in this video. Of course, we have 9.xx for the PS5 and everybody waiting on 10.0 and 10.01k stuff so we can jailbreak up to 10.01. There's been a few developments there as well. So let's go ahead and get into this. So starting with, of course, the new system updates that were released by Sony for the PS4 and PS5 bringing the PS4 firmware version up to 13.00 for the latest version and also 12.00 now being the latest version on the PS5. We're kind of getting these firmware versions to be very similar numbers between the PS4 and PS5 now, which might get a little bit confusing in the future. But yeah, so 12.00 for the PS5 and 13.00 on the PS4. Now, nothing really mentioned in the update notes for 13.00 for the PS4. Although it looks like 13.00 has actually patched a number of things. So first of all, from the developer of the Blu-ray exploit, Geji Ne, we have, I guess, Sony patched my 12.52 BD jailbreak exploit at PS4 13.00 without telling me. So just to kind of clarify here, we do have a Blu-ray exploit, of course, for the PS4 that works up to firmware 12.50, but this is only a user land exploit. So we can only use it to jailbreak up to 12.02 as the kernel exploit only works up to 12.02. But 12.52, apparently Gejine has had another exploit, another Blu-ray exploit that works up to 12.52, which was the latest firmware previously. And so they reported it to Sony via the HackerOne bug bounty program, but never got any response. However, it looks like Sony has actually patched that vulnerability. So either they saw the report. It's also possible that somebody else already reported this vulnerability to Sony earlier and they're the one that got the bounty reward and I guess this report was just ignored but either way it has been patched. So it looks like no more Blu-ray exploits for 13.00 and higher at least for now. So of course if you're on 12.52 stay on 12.52 because if any future kernel exploits come out that support your firmware you'll probably be able to load it with a Blu-ray exploit whereas if you update to 13.00 you likely won't and will have to use the Lua exploit, which still seems to remain unpatched to this day on 13.00 and 12.00 on the PS5 as well. The Lua exploit still works. Stay on as low a firmware as possible. That's always the general advice. Not only that, but Zeko also reporting that 13.00 patches a memory leak in IPMIMGR, according to Keys Friend, the elusive Keys Friend again. So it looks like there has been some additional things patched. We also have Zeko posting some comparisons here between the Java files from 13.00 and 12.52 to show the differences. And we can see a lot of additional code has been added in these files. Zeko saying that path traversal has essentially been patched. Also, Sony seems to have added additional security measures to the following files. We've got the BDJ stack, which of course is the Blu-ray Java stack. And then also we've got RT, which is the core Java class You've got JSSE, the secure socket extension, JCE, the cryptography extension. So there's been some additional code added into all of those Java runtime libraries to beef up security by the looks of things, likely to try and patch other Blu-ray based vulnerabilities, which again makes it very important that you stay below that firmware if you're wanting to jailbreak in the future. If you've updated past 12.02 already, but you're lower than 13.00, just stay on that firmware. Hopefully you were able to get the Lua game demos as I made a video a while back after the 12.02 jailbreak came out showing you guys who were on the latest firmwares at the time how you could download those free Lua game demos with the Japanese accounts and then put your console offline so that you could then use those to load any future jailbreaks that come out. So another thing that we got for version 13 for the PS4 was a new build of PS4 Hen supporting 13.00. So of course, this is not usable at the moment until we have a new jailbreak that actually works up to 13.00, but the payload is already updated and ready with the necessary offsets to work on that firmware. So if we do get a jailbreak for 13.0 in the future, we should be able to run this payload on it. Now that's obviously not always the case because depending on how the new jailbreak works, if we get a new jailbreak that is loaded in a different way, it might require a different payload format. So it's still not a guarantee that this payload would work immediately out of the box with any new jailbreak. Assuming it's loaded in the same way as our existing payloads, then we would be able to just load this and get Hen running on that firmware once we get a jailbreak up to that firmware, which obviously we don't have currently. But anyway, that is what we've got there for the PS4. Beyond that, there's been some developments on the PS5 as well surrounding the K stuff. 
release. So we're waiting on 10.0 and 10.01. It's proving to be a lot more difficult for Echo Stretch to port K stuff to 10.0 and 10.01 compared to the 9.xx firmwares, although it will likely get ported fairly soon. It looks like some progress is being made here. And we can see from the workflow on GitHub, there was a 6.xx hotfix that's been added to fix some issues with KStuff on 6.xx firmwares. So if you were having any problems using KStuff with 6.xx, then you can try this version here. If you have a GitHub account, you can simply select it here and download the payload and give that a try. And then we also have 10.xx offsets have now been added, although it does stipulate that they are not working at the moment. But that does show that there's definitely progress being made on 10.0 and 10.01. So hopefully we will see a working version fairly soon. We'll keep our fingers crossed there. Now also Lightning Mods has updated the toolbox with 10.01 support for ETA Hen. So even though K-Stuff isn't available on 10.0 or 10.01 yet, you can load just the toolbox on those firmwares, which will give you access to the cheats, as well as other features built into ETA Hen that you can apply to your retail games in the meantime, while you wait for K-Stuff to get ported. There is an invite link here to the Discord server, the Package Zone Discord server, and in there you'll find the ETA Hen public test channel, and you'll find the latest build of ETA Hen pinned in that channel that you can download. Now, if you are not using Discord or you're not wanting to use these public test builds, especially on 9.xx firmwares, because we don't have an official release of ETA Hen yet, Lightning Mods will be waiting for K-Stuff to come out for 10.0 and 10.01 before a public version is posted, most likely. So therefore you have to use these test builds and they usually expire within several days, but it is still possible to run your PS5 games just with K-Stuff alone. It's definitely not as convenient as running them on ETA Hen, but it is an option. So I did a quick reconfiguration of my jailbreak setup on 9.60 to test it with KStuff standalone, where basically I just edit my PS5 Lua loader and change the autoload text file to load the regular PS5 Lua menu. And I also downloaded the WebServe payload and copied it into that location, along with the homebrew launcher as well, which I copied to the root of the USB drive. You can basically just create a folder in your USB drive called Homebrew, and then you extract your game dumps into that location. You also need the dump runner from Echo Stretch's GitHub repo, and you extract the contents of the dump runner into your game folders, so each one of your game folders. And then also you can create another folder called KStuff Toggle, and you can download the KStuff Toggle directly again from Echo Stretch's repo and copy it also into that folder. And that's how you can have your USB structured. If you connect that to the PS5, if you run the jailbreak, if it's successful, it will load up the web menu and then you can simply select the web serve payload to get that loaded and then refresh it with triangle and then load the KStuff payload. And then I believe after KStuff is loaded, it doesn't actually show the notification. You have to press circle to close the web page and then it will come up with the notification, at which point it should then automatically close the disc player. And then we can install our homebrew launcher with the package installer in the debug settings. And of course you can do the same with any PS4 fake packages, install them with the debug settings to get those working. But for PS5 games, you can then run the homebrew launcher that you install with the debug settings and it should pop up if you've ran the web serve payload. And you can see your PS5 games in there and you can select the game you want to launch and it will launch it. And you can just press circle to close the web panel and you'll see that the game has loaded. And then you can also switch back to the home page and go back on the homebrew launcher again to run the KStuff toggle payload which will give you some extra performance in the game and you can switch back to the game using the switcher in the menu as well to get back into your game with KStuff disabled. So it's not as convenient as using ETA Hen but of course ETA Hen doesn't always support the latest firmwares that KStuff supports immediately. It normally takes a little while before ETA Hen catches up to get support so in the meantime you can use this to run your PS5 games and of course, if you don't like having to use test builds, then you can use this until there is an official release of ETA Hen supporting your firmware. Now, Lightning Mods has also been looking at changing the way KStuff is implemented in ETA Hen, saying here that I've been thinking of making an auto load KStuff option, an advanced option in the ETA Hen toolbox, sticking it in a KStuff menu with the upcoming download latest KStuff option. What are we thinking? So, with the download latest KStuff option, I believe. This will kind of fix the problem we have at the moment where a new version of KStuff comes out. Maybe, you know, ETA Hen gets updated to include that new version. And then another new version of KStuff comes out 
And then of course ETA Hen has to then get updated again just for that new version of KStuff to be implemented. So I think the idea is that KStuff will be implemented as like a separate module that you can download and be loaded as part of ETA Hen, kind of like a plugin, but maybe a little bit more integrated than a regular plugin file where essentially you would load ETA Hen and then you can also download the latest version of KStuff to be loaded. So whenever a new version of KStuff comes out, you don't necessarily need a new version of ETA Hen that implements it and use an option inside ETA Hen to download the latest KStuff release and it would just download the latest version and auto load that and you have the option to auto load it or not load it, which I would personally welcome. I think that would be a better way of having it so that you wouldn't have to constantly have new versions of ETA Hen having to catch up with new releases of KStuff uh, in the future. So if that's doable, that would certainly be a good option to have in a new ETA Hen release. So anyway, that's going to do it here for this one. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.